जो जो तेरा हुक्म तिवे त्यो होमणा जो जो तेरा हुक्म गुड मॉर्निंग तिवे त्यो सत्सिंह का पता नमस्कार थैंक यू फॉर बीइंग हियर I won't say that I am here to pay my last respects to Surinder, our friend. My respect for Surinder would never end. It's his body that we are being last respect to. I have the honor of being his friend. Very briefly, I taught him in med school. But after that, for most of the years, it was I who was learning things from Srinagar. I was more a student of him later than he was of mine. the responsibility of this morning to take you through the proceedings has been assigned to me <coughs> all of you know surinder in one way or the other i will just share how i knew him surinder was the most ordinary looking extraordinary person that i know he was not spectacular to look at walking on the road he would not draw anybody's attention these words look very ordinary or simple but the truth is in life it's very easy to be spectacular too tall a person too short a person somebody speaking too much and too loud or somebody staying absolutely quiet will draw our attention sridhar was none of that he lived right in the middle everything he did was what buddha says as the middle path of life he would never eat too much or too less he would never laugh too much or not laugh even in his anger his voice would rise only to a certain limit and then stop even in his anger when he said something to his friends or his children affection would never leave his voice that's being in the middle it was very hard to be surinder's enemy to be enemy two people have to declare that we are enemy to each other now then enmity starts and surinder would never declare he would just refuse to be drawn into such an argument or anger that would invoke any enmity i know people who deliberately try to harm him surinder had a hard time going by them but as soon as the first opportunity arose he would go to their house invite them to his house meet them as if nothing had happened there are two words in punjabi my mother tongue actually in the indian 
culture and sanskriti that is one is word is sad and one is sant sant is the same meaning as saint uh, sad is the one in whom the anger the desires arise but he controls them usne apna man sadhya ho sant is the one in which the anger the desire does not arise in that way the violence doesn't arise in him his persona his spirit has grown so big that anger does not has a permission to rise surinder in that sense was closer to being a sant almost a saintly person i don't know anybody else in all my friends who kept so many people in his house who fed so many people transported them to so many places and taught so many people so that they can pass their exams and succeed in life he had immense capability for that that's why all of you are here twenty four years ago i lived alone in the city gulf for four months my family had gone away there were 10 friends in the city they would ask they would invite me to supper and they would ask how is the food going on it's no indian men don't cook well surinder was exception though and i would say i went to namjoot and surinder's house they i had dinner there and when i left they packed the rest of the food the man would get stuck they also had to pack food for me i would survive on that food for two days and then another friend i would go to his house four months i didn't cook and i was having food every day twenty four years later when i remember that thing and i realized <coughs> there is somebody who feeds you and he or she is a great person because god feeds us essentially one who feeds us has the hands of god it could be your wife it could be your friend but surinder and navjot were such people that even i could take their name and i could get food in the city for four months sometimes beggars approach you and they will ask you give me something in the name of god because beggar knows on his own he does not qualify for your help he has not given you anything so he invokes the name of god to get food i could invoke the name of surinder and of jyot in the city and i could get food <clears throat> when i was when i heard that surinder is no more and we were traveling to ottawa on the way i got a phone call it was dr kaushik who was supervisor of surinder when he was doing phd at golf he said I am in India because my father has passed away and I am calling you Sukhpal to for a specific assignment you have to be at Surinder's last rites and you have to make sure that everything is done in the way it should be done I said Dr Kaushik his family will make sure I know that he said I also know that his family is very self respecting self sufficient self reliant people but if i were there i would make sure that now i am assigning this to you if any resource is needed if any money is needed you spend it and i will pay you i said i will do that 
long for a long time after his he put down his phone i was lost in that call <clears throat> it was not the call of a supervisor it was the call of a father who cannot be present at the last rites of his son Only Sundar could invoke such emotions in people he touched. Sundar was not just a friend to us. He would never meet like a friend. He would meet more like a brother. He was younger to me. I come from Canada. I come from India to Canada, and he offers me five thousand dollars and says, "You might need it." He never lived lavishly. He would rather save his money not to buy an expensive car. He would rather give it to his friends so that they can survive. You go to his house. If he has bought a new car, he will not show you that. He would rather take you in the backyard and show you the new cucumber which grew on his on the plant in his kitchen garden. He was very much attached to earth. He was a farmer by heart. He would go to his friend's house right away before taking a cup of tea. He would take his shoes off, get into their kitchen garden, take all the weeds out, plant, give them water, and tell them what to do next. He was child with children, old person with older men. He was. Illiterate with illiterates and educated with educated people. This is what his younger brother Gurinder was saying last evening. Despite being sick himself in the last few years, he never stopped taking care of his parents. That still remained a priority. Every weekend he would call India to ask how the family is. He would save. Twenty-year-old things, which people didn't know exist, he and he would say, "This is history. This has to be preserved." Somebody who fought election twenty years ago and his pamphlet, he would not have, but Surinder would have, because he is a friend, he is a family. We can be sad that Surinder has left us. Or we can be happy that a beautiful flower of nature was blossoming in the middle of us for more than fifty years, and he was a very ordinary-looking and extraordinary flower of nature. <clears throat> we are material. We are. energy and we are consciousness energy is gone when one dies the matter in few hours now which was part of surinder's body will go back where it came from to the earth in his consciousness he remains with us good morning everybody uh, <coughs> my name is aline dimitri i'm uh, From the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, and seven months ago, I became the ED of Animal Health. And seven months ago, <clears throat> Surinder came to see me in my office and said, "Hi. Whatever you need, just come and see me, and I'll be happy to share information with you. I'm happy to give you whatever you need to be able to have a good start." Seven months ago, I never thought I'd be standing here in front of you today. On behalf of the entire agency, to say these few words, Surinder was one of a unique group of people who had actually had an opportunity to try every part of the agency. He was in different branches. He saw our business from every single angle. And today, as I saw people coming in, I saw people from our operations, our programs, our policy, our science. Everybody knew Surinder. Everybody loved Surinder. Everybody wanted to be here to pay their respects, and so 
I think it is important for us to recognize the impact that he's had on all the people in the organization. Surrender will certainly be missed. He'll be missed because he had tea with people. He'll be missed because his employees absolutely adored how sensitive he was to their, ne to their needs, how human he was, how respectful and yet professional he was. He will be missed because he had an incredible smile. He often would usher me at the end of the day out of the office saying, it's time to go home. There's a family, go home. And he did that with all of us. He will be missed because he would listen, because he was not at all selfish with his knowledge. But the truth is, he will not be forgotten. He was a role model. He shared unconditionally, and that is something that I have seen in other people who have been with him. I understand that he's actually taught many of our veterinarians. I didn't know that until he passed away. A number of people I'd worked with, they said, you know, he was my teacher. Or, you know, he was my colleague at school. But I taught, I learned so much from him. And he continued to teach. And so, let's take solace in the fact that all his knowledge, all his selflessness has planted seeds in every person who's ever been around him. And that seed will grow. He was also a role model, the way he behaved, the way he embodied the values, the way he respected people, the way he got into very good discussions over things that he truly believed in. All done in respect, in caring. And that certainly is a role model that a lot of us will want to follow. So again, while he's no longer with us and we are deeply, deeply saddened that we'll no longer have the opportunity to learn from him, to go to him for advice, to go to him just to have a different perspective. He will always be with us because he has planted many seeds in many people's thoughts and minds and hearts which we will grow. And it is one of his greatest legacies and I have to tell you, I already see it in our team. People who want to continue his legacy. Little things sometimes. I found out that at Christmas he gave chocolates to every single person in the team. And that is something that meant a lot to people. And in fact, in the Animal Health Directorate, we're going to continue this tradition every year. Because it is those little things that help other people grow into really strong people and carry the legacy of a wonderful man, Dr. Surinder Sani. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Dimitri. Surinder spent a lot of his life at work and he worked very well. Thanks for sharing that perspective with us. Now I would like to invite Srinder's son, Mr. Sukhmandeep Singh, to say a few words about his dad. And his daughter, Ravneet. Let us see Srinder from their eyes. ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਪ੍ਰਵਾਨ ਕਰਿਓ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ This past week we lost a great soul in Dr. Surinder Singh Sani Some lost their golfing partner some lost their walking partner some lost their gardening buddy some lost their mentor and some lost their dear colleague this has been a hard few days for my family and I as we get over great loss not only to the family but to the Sikh community in Ottawa and the worldwide scientific community as well. 
As many of you know, two decades ago, my father was completing his PhD at the University of Guelph under the supervision of Dr. Azad Kashik, who was not only his mentor, but a dear friend as well. There's many things my father never told others about and kept them to himself, which we are slowly discovering. Something unknown to most is that my father shared authorship and editorialship on over a hundred scientific journals and held many patents as well, many of which were used worldwide. Life after Guelph in Brampton, where we brought where we bought our first house and first brand new car, his favorite 2003 Toyota Corolla. In Brampton, many of those who were close to his heart from back home were always around and almost every weekend was filled with events surrounded by friends and family. Brampton always held a special place in his heart. Then we came to Ottawa. On August 17, 2010, we moved to Nepean under the guidance of his friends Dr. Como and Mr. Gamire and many others. After our arrival into Ottawa, many other close friends followed suit. The Bakshis and Sanis from Guelph, as well as the Butchers from Victoria. Many of you know life was going good until it all came crashing down with my grandfather's passing in 2012. My father was the eldest out of his siblings and his father was very dear to not only his heart but mine as well. My grandfather and father shared a bond that no other, no, no other two people in the entire world shared. They told each other things that they would share with no one else. Life was never the same for Dr. Sani. We all feel as though a part of my father went with my grandfather's passing. The health complications for my father started after he came back from my grandfather's funeral. Sorry. After the complications, Started, my father faced a tough decision and decided to send my sister abroad for her masters. Five whole years she, she spent in England, coming back multiple times to see us over her breaks. My start to university in 2016 was not very successful, which worried my father. Sleepless nights for me watching over my father, just in case anything happened, Sleepless nights for me, watching over my father, just in case anything happened, led to me going to class tired and helpless. Many EEGs, MRIs, and monitoring sessions, and even a surgery later, we were given a diagnosis of sleep apnea. But the health complications still stayed. In 2016, we took a family trip to Vancouver and the surrounding area to meet all of his college mates and we enjoyed my uncle Navi's wedding in Seattle. January 2019 was tough for us. My father not only had a seizure in his sleep, but for the first time also had an irregular rhythm in his heart. Doctors had no idea how he survived. Just a couple months ago, he witnessed the first wedding of our generation. But Lee was not was very dear to his heart, the first one to get married out of all our cousins. My other cousin Napit was also very dear to his heart. The first one out of all cousins to go forward with completing his PhD. He was very proud of not only those two, but of all our cousins on both sides of the family. This past summer was very eventful for our family. My sister was finally coming home after five long years. 
I was adamant on going to India after not going for nine years, but we all decided to go to Europe instead, which ended up being the trip of a lifetime. It was the best time of our lives and we will never forget it. Everything was Everything was going great. We were all very happy. Coming back from Europe, we went to see some of the family in DC to celebrate my sister's success. Another semester started at university and I was off to a great start. And my, my sister was studying for her designation exams. Finally on the right track, he said, after I told him I had been excelling in university. He asked my grades just two weeks ago, and I had told him I was acing uni, and I was planning on going towards my MBA, and he said, that's great news. On the night of the 15th of November, our lives changed forever. My father was not only touched, not only touched the lives of his family, but also touched the lives of everyone around him. He never wished anyone any heart and only wish them success and prosperity something personal i'm going to share with you all today is a poem is a poem he had written to me for my 20th birthday some of which i'm going to share with you all today sakht mein lagan ate pyar de naal vad vadda jaave agge hi agge agge hi agge which roughly translate to with hard work and love you keep growing keep going forward keep going forward although his body physically was with us here in Canada his mind was always back home in Punjab he never let us forget our roots he used to tell me in private which roughly trans translates to, we began from the village and we will always end in the village. He worried about people in, from his village and many others who he had met during his college life. Many of you may not know that my grandfather had helped fund an orphanage for underprivileged girls back home and that my father and along with the rest of the family continued to keep the orphanage going even after my grandfather's passing. This orphanage was always dear to his heart as he would spend as much time as possible there. I wish to continue this tradition along with everybody's support and I would be blessed to be even 1% of the man that my father was I would like to thank many individuals for their support during this difficult time, including Dr. Gochard and family, Dr. Pancho and family, Dr. Sami and family, Shiva Gumira and family, Dr. Koma and family, Dr. Bakshi and family, Dr. Sethi and family, and the Broad family, as well as countless friends and family who do not come to mind as of yet. Today, we not only mourn the loss of a great man, but celebrate the legacy that Dr. Surinder Singh Sani has left behind. Although it is difficult to accept this decision, we must all accept this as God's test for all of us and continue to go forward. It's up to us, all his friends and family, to keep this legacy going forward and to help all those around us. Thank you. Dr. Surinder Singh Sani, a loving grandson, a responsible son, a caring brother, a gentle husband, a devoted father, a generous, lively, and kind human being, and today, an angel looking over from, from above. 
All of us gathered here today, in one way or another, have been touched by the kindness, the generosity, and the love this soul had to offer during his short time here on Earth. Papa was the most caring and thoughtful person I know. He always put others first and was ready to lend a hand to anyone in need. Some of my earliest childhood memories are of uncles constantly coming and going from our house in Wellington Woods, staying with us while they sat their board exams. It was always a whirlwind in our house and well, but Papa found joy in helping others. Through his actions, Papa taught me so much about compassion and care for others, and that is something I will continue to take forward in my life. Another important lesson Papa taught me is Hum nahi jange, bura nahi goi. This roughly translates to, I am not good and no one is bad. Papa being the man that he is, he was a very patient and understanding person. He always put others first and always considered the feelings of others prior to his own. My dad was an embodiment of these words and he strived to live by this principle day by day. Whenever I would throw a tantrum in my teenage years or get into a fight with my mother or brother, Papa would be the one to console me, take me into a corner and remind me of these words. A reminder to live humbly, let go of your ego and forgive others with an open heart. A lot of people say that my father struggled a lot in his life to get to where he was today, but I would like to change that. He didn't struggle, he overcame. Every hardship and hardship and hurdle life threw at him, Papa overcame it gracefully and was back on his feet in no time. Mama and I always used to discuss this, that Papa's life was the stuff of fairy tales. He started off from such humble beginnings in a small bin called Shakrulapur. From there, he started his life journey. There were many speed bumps and detours along the way, but he finally reached his ultimate goal, became a national manager for the CFI in Canada, and represented Canada on the world stage. He was really happy in his position and was proud of his team and everything they achieved together. Papa, to say that I'm gonna miss you would be a massive understatement. You were my rock, my best friend, the only one who truly understood me. We shared a bond unlike any other and would share secrets and stresses of life with each other. I would really miss our inside jokes, sticking our tongues out to each other, and teasing mom for only knowing how to make Golga Pella Pani and Curry properly. <laughs> I also really miss your constant reminders to study, to excel, and your favorite to always do advanced planning. I'm sure anyone and everyone who's worked with you or under you, knows how particular you are about planning ahead and being prepared for all scenarios. But this is a scenario that none of us could have ever been prepared for. It is with a heavy heart that we accept the realities in front of us today. I am sure you'll be missed by everyone here today, Papa. You were the trunk that connected so many branches of our family tree together. You are loved by all your friends, so many of whom have been so helpful to us over the past few days, and I'm sure will continue to stand by us as we move forward from this blow. I'm sure your friends and colleagues will miss drinking with you, whether it was drinking coffee from Tim Hortons or shots of Crown Royal. I promise to live my life by the values and lessons you have taught me, Papa. Although it's nearly impossible to do so, I will try to be as kind, patient and caring as you have been for the past 56 years. I promise to take care of my mind Sukhman and I'll make sure that Sukhman does well academically. But I know you don't have to worry about this because your tata will make you proud. <laughs> I promise we will continue to listen to and sing Muhammad Sadiq and Rajit songs at the top of our lungs <laughs> and we'll maintain your beautiful garden just as you did every year. <laughs> All my life, I have seen Papa give advice to others. Whenever he would meet someone or family came over, we would talk, he would take each person to the side, talk to them heart to heart, and offer them any help and guidance possible. Every family member, young and old, would respect his guidance about all situations in life. Sometimes the young ones would get a bit annoyed by the constant lectures Papa would give, which is normal. But even then, you knew his lectures were always out of love and care. So I will end my speech today with words of advice that he always lived by and truly believed, and would want all of his loved ones to live by as well. 
It is a poem that he really enjoyed listening to, and it goes, Padi namaz ta niyaz na sikhya, teriya kis kam padi anamaza, na kar ditha, na kar wala ditha, teriya kis kam ditya niyaza. Eram padiya te amal na kita, teriya kis kam kiti awaza. Bulde shaak pata ta tu lai si ta tu chidi fusi hat baza. We love you, Papa. We will follow your footsteps and values and promise to make you very proud. Thank you. We have a short video prepared, so we ask for your attention during this video.
पन सुट्टा मैं तेनू चूर कर दे मिट्टी दे ते जा बहने महबूब दी ताके पन न सुट्टी तू मैनू चूर न कर दे अगे बड़े दुख पहला चोट कई खाती ते फिर हथ कुट घुमार मेरा चूरा किता ते फिर छननी नाड़ छना पानी पा मेरा गारा किता ते मेरे पिने चाखूब बना चुक घुमार पत्थर पर धरिया ते मेरे गेड़े तो खूब दुआ सीता महबूब